today we're going to be making a clay llama. Okay, we are starting with a half a pound of clay, a little block, and we are going to start by make, pounding the corners into our palm of our hand gently. And once you have those rounded down, we're just going to um, start rolling it. You could smash it in your hand. We're going to make a ball and um, we are going to make a pinch pot because this llama, he's actually hollow under there. So we're just going to roll it around in your hands, roll it on the table. And okay, so now we have a nice ball and um, we're going to put our thumb in it. And once you have a blueberry thumb, you're going to take your fingers and you're going to smash flat like a, like a duck. You're going to do that all the way around your llama body and um, until you have, it's going to be like this. So you kind of look at it, llamas have a nice flat back, um, but you can kind of, once you have a good pinch pot formed, you can kind of, um, if you know this side is going to be the booty, you can kind of push it out kind of a rounder booty. You can um, flatten the front a little bit and you'd want it still kind of thick on the bottom because you're going to have to have enough room to attach your legs. So I got my the back of my llama flat and um, it's pretty good so I'm going to just set that aside. And I'm going to get another piece of clay and roll a nice thick coil. Now this guy in clay Llama's legs, you know, they're normally long and skinny, but um, he's heavy with this neck. And so um, we're going to make our legs a little thinner. So I'm just going to use a tool and I'm going to cut some legs. So now I've got my four legs ready and we are going to attach those. Anytime you attach something with clay, you have to score and slip. And there's a lot of different ways of doing that, but we're just going to use one of our tools. You can use a needle tool if you have one. Um, scoring is boring, but I make lots of lines. And you're just making some chicken scratch lines around here. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the leg to attach it. Scoring is boring, but I make lots of lines. The next one is slipping is dipping, and I like it just fine. You're gonna, um, and then the third part after you stick it on there is smoothing is soothing. It erases the lines, and this part is really important because um, if you just score and slip it, sometimes it is not quite enough, um, especially if you didn't score enough or add enough slip. So it's really important to kind of grab that clay from either the top or the bottom and pull it onto the other piece so it really attaches really well. Do that to all your feet. And then now I'm trying to stand my llama up and you can tell right away this one is too tall. So, but it's clay so it smushes so you can kind of adjust it if he doesn't stand that well. You can kind of adjust it. And now I've got that done. That's all I'm gonna do right now for that part and I'm going to start on the head. I think this was about four ounces of clay and um, you're going to make a nice thick coil. It's important that you don't make it too skinny. So just keep your hands off of it every one, like take your hands off of it every once in a while and check it to make sure it hasn't gotten too um, too long and too skinny. I think that's that's pretty good. So now that I have it a good size I wanted, I'm just gonna smooth any cracks in it. And I'm gonna take the top part and fold it over. Um, and that's long enough, I can really just fold it. But if you wanna kind of squish it out, yeah, you probably do. You're gonna wanna squish it out and make the the head, a llama head is, they got kind of a skinny little head. So you can kind of pinch that and make it, you can kind of think of a candy corn. It's kind of 
kind of a rounded triangle. You can pinch the nose in. And then once you have it kind of looking like this, that is good enough for this step. And we're going to attach it by scoring and slipping. Surprise, surprise. Again, score really well on that. Make sure that when you get to the part of smoothing that you do that really well. And just support it with your hand. Okay, so I've got, he's almost, <laughs> he looks like a brontosaurus. His neck is really long. That's okay though. Um, so I've got my legs, I've got the body and the head is attached. I'm gonna add a little nubbin of a tail with just an extra piece of clay. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing for the ears, although um, the ear, llama ears, you know, they're no joke. So they're kind of even bigger. I'm probably gonna make them bigger than my tail. And I'm going to score and slip my tail on. And then um, I'm gonna grab another pinch of clay. Okay, my llama booty, this side is getting kind of thin. So that really caved that whole thing in. So that's okay, I'm just gonna push it out again. I'm gonna put my finger in there and hold it still while I spread it out to attach that little tail and, um, and just smush it back into place and that's perfectly fine. And now for the next part, you're going to get um, two more pieces of clay or you could even do one rectangle and cut it into two triangles. I'm just going to round the edges a little bit so that it's not, um, it doesn't look like a rectangle still, so just smush those around them. And um, when I get an ear that I like, I'm going to score and slip those to the top of the head. Now um, this is enough. If we'll, we'll add details, but this basic form is enough if you want to have a llama from like a llama in the wild. Um, if you want to have a pet llama that's wearing a blanket and he is going into market or I guess there, I don't know if there really are llamas in the wild actually now that I say that. I think farmers own them all, um, but maybe there are wild llamas, I don't know. So anyways, if your llama is just a llama that's frolicking in the field and he has no blanket on, that's fine. You can stop there. Um, we are going to add more details to him, but if you want to make a blanket for your llama, you're going to take your last bit of clay. This is going to get loud. I'm going to put my, move some loud things. Okay. You're going to get your last bit of clay and you're going to make a slab by pounding, which is going to Just flipping and pounding. Notice I'm going gently. I don't want to get knuckle marks in there because I want it to be a fairly flat blanket. So you can kind of try it on for size. It's getting long enough but too fat, but that's okay because I can cut that down. So um, I'm going to cut out some of this and see how that fits on his back. Still a little too fat, so I'm going to slice a little more off. And there we go. I have a perfect llama blanket. So you're also going to want to score and slip that onto him. You know what? I'm going to break down and use the toothbrush on this one. It's a whole lot of scoring. So I'm going to rough it up, dip it in some water. I'm kind of scoring and slipping at once. press that in. Now, um, on this one, I am not going to smooth it very much because I want it to look like a blanket on his back. If you want to use your um, popsicle stick, this would be a good time in a few places just to kind of pull it together and then smooth that and it can still look separate because it still has that edge. So I've got my llama, he's got his blankie on, and it's time to add some fun details. Some of the details that I added 
And you guys can do this or you can think of your own ways to, to make yours unique. Um, I added a hoof. You can see on this one. See, I tried to add a little hoof just by taking this tool and um, pressing it in there. So if you wanted to try that, you could make a little um, llama hoofs just by pressing into the legs. And I did it just like on this flat leg. I just went ahead and put that in and then see when it does that, it kind of pulls it out if it's sitting on the table. I don't know how well you can see that in the camera, but for the eyes, I just poked a, a hole in using the back of my tool. For the mouth, I used my popsicle stick. This popsicle stick has gotten a lot of action today. And I just kind of sliced it in there. And then you can use your hands to form his mouth how you want it. You can use, um, you can use one of these tools to give him some nostrils. You could give a little poke into the eyeball. You could do an eyeball that's more like this guy that has the um, a sphere attached, like a big googly, googly eye. If you wanted to add that to your llama, you could, just by making two spheres and scoring and slipping them on. Um, you could give eyelashes. You could add a little crease into the ear. You can use your tools, you can use your fingers, or both. Texture would be really good to add some fur. For this guy, I used these, which these will be fun. I don't know if we've used these before, but this is a Scraffito loop tool, and it has these two different loops on it, and they're different sizes. But you can use this loop tool and you can carve out some little fur. The one thing I would be careful of is if you get um, clay booger, you know, pull it off because those things will be spiky when fired. So we don't want a lot of spikes coming from it, but you can definitely carve fur in. We'll be glazing colors on your llama blanket. So um, I think if you want to keep the llama blanket smooth, um, without getting you know clay boogers you may just want to leave it without carving a design and instead we'll paint the design on when we get our glazes when these come out of the kiln the first time um, when they're bisque fired we will glaze them so today we're just going to use the rest of our time to add texture to this little guy and when you're all the way done we are gonna put your um, name or initials on the bottom feet and we're gonna let them dry on the blue trays up at the main supply table.